Coming up on 5-Minute News. More than 260 soldiers evacuated from Mariupol Mill. US allows more baby formula imports to manage shortage. And Biden eases restrictions on remittances and travel to Cuba. It's Tuesday, May 17. I'm Anthony Davis. Around 260 Ukrainian fighters, including some who were badly wounded, were evacuated on Monday from a steel plant in the ruined city of Mariupol and taken to areas under Russia's control, the Ukrainian military said. Deputy Defence Minister Hanna Malia said 53 seriously wounded fighters were taken to a hospital east of Mariupol. An additional 211 fighters were evacuated to Olenivka through a humanitarian corridor. An exchange would be worked out for their return home, she said. Malia said missions were underway to rescue the remaining fighters inside the plant, the last stronghold of resistance in the devastated southern port city. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky said the evacuation of the fighters from Azovstal to separatist-controlled territory was to save their lives. He said the heavily wounded were getting medical help. The steel mill's defenders got out as Moscow suffered another diplomatic setback in its war with Ukraine, with Sweden joining Finland in deciding to seek NATO membership. And Zelensky congratulated soldiers who reportedly pushed Russian forces back near the border. Russian forces pounded targets in the industrial heartland of eastern Ukraine known as the Donbass, and the death toll, already many thousands, kept climbing, with the war set to enter its 12th week on Wednesday. Under fire from parents and politicians, President Joe Biden's administration announced steps yesterday to ease a nationwide shortage of baby formula, including reopening the largest domestic manufacturing plant and increasing imports from overseas. The Food and Drug Administration said it was streamlining its review process to make it easier for foreign manufacturers to begin shipping formula to the U.S. The FDA expects that the measures and steps it's taken with infant formula manufacturers and others will mean more and more supply it's on its way or on store shelves moving forward, said the FDA Commissioner Robert Califf. He said the U.S. will prioritize companies that can provide the largest shipments and quickly show documentation that their formulas are safe and meet U.S. nutrition standards. The imports announcement came shortly after regulators said they'd reached a deal to allow Abbott Nutrition to restart its Sturgis, Michigan-based plant, which has been closed since February due to contamination issues. The company must overhaul its safety protocols and procedures before resuming production. Neither step will have an immediate effect on tight supplies that have left many parents searching for formula online or in food banks. After getting the FDA's OK, Abbott said it will take 8 to 10 weeks before new products begin arriving in stores. The company didn't set a timeline to restart manufacturing. Getting imports into the US supply chain could take several months, according to administration officials. Even before the latest change, FDA officials said imports of baby formula are already up more than 300% from last year. The United States on Monday announced a series of steps to revise its policy towards Cuba, including easing some Trump-era restrictions on family remittances and travel to the island and sharply increasing the processing of U.S. visas for Cubans. The measures, which were rolled out after a lengthy U.S. government review, mark the most significant changes in the U.S. approach to Havana since President Joe Biden took office in January 2021. But the announcement stopped short of returning U.S.-Cuba relations to the historic reproachment engineered by former President Barack Obama, under whom Biden served as vice president. That included less crimped flow of remittances, fewer travel curbs, and faster visa services. U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price, in a statement, said the measures announced on Monday were to further support the Cuban people, providing them additional tools to pursue a life free from Cuban government oppression and to seek greater economic opportunities. 
The State Department said the United States would lift the cap on family remittances previously set to $1,000 per quarter and authorize donative remittances to non-family members. But it made clear that the United States would not remove entities from the Cuba Restricted List, a State Department list of Cuban government and military-aligned companies with whom U.S. firms and citizens are barred from doing business. The United States will use electronic payment processes for remittances to avoid funds going directly to the Cuban government, an official said, adding that the United States had already engaged with the Cuban government about establishing a civilian processor for this. Biden officials have been mindful that easing restrictions on the communist-run island could lead to political fallout from conservative Cuban Americans, a key voting bloc in South Florida who mostly backed former President Donald Trump's tough policies on Cuba. Senator Bob Menendez, the Democratic chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, said in a statement, Today's announcement risks sending the wrong message to the wrong people at the wrong time and for the wrong reasons. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate. Delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.